So on the last episode, we implemented our second query handler. Our query handler only handles getting data or querying the database. A command handler is something that mutates the state of the database. So a create, uh, an update, or a delete. So going down our controller, the next thing we want to work on is our post mapping, where we do a product repository dot save when we create a product. So it's going to follow the exact same pattern we did when we implemented our query handlers. So over here is our query dot Java. And we're going to do the same thing, but instead it's going to be a command. So I'm going to do file new Java class. It's going to be an interface and it's going to be a command. angle brackets, E comma T. E is going to stand for entity and T, and T is a generic in Java. It's going to have a single method. It's going to return a response entity. And I've seen people use execute and I've seen people use handle to name the method. Uh, we're going to do execute. And it's going to take in the E entity. So going back to our controller, we have our create product. So we're going to create a new folder, file, new package, command handlers. And we want it at, inside our product folder. There we go. So in here, we're going to create a new command handler. So file new Java class. Create product command handler. It's going to implement command. And it's going to take in a product and return a response entity and import. And we need to implement the method. Okay. Hey, it's me from the future. I'm editing this video and I forgot to annotate this class with the at service annotation. Make sure to do that. Otherwise it will not run correctly and you'll see me figure this out soon. And for whatever reason, it did a response entity with a response entity. We don't need that. Delete this part. So going back to our controller, we're going to copy this logic and bring it over here. And of course, we're not done yet. So we need to bring over the product repository into this class, just like we did with our query handler. So scrolling up, product repository, copy, and paste. It automatically named it entity. So I'm going to change this to say product. And now it works. I'm going to go ahead and link it up, but we're not done yet. We're going to add some more logic here in just a second. So I'm going to go back to my product controller and we need to inject it. So at auto wired private create product command handler, create product command handler. So we shall do create product command handler dot execute product. And of course we need to return it and we are all linked up. So a command handler or a query handler for that matter is where you're going to write your business logic. So in this previous example, we just assumed that product, the product coming in would automatically be good to save to the database. It would be valid. But you can imagine a state where the product being passed in is wrong in some sort of way. Perhaps the price is negative or it doesn't have a name. 
And so what we want to do is before we actually save a bunch of bad data to our database, we want to validate that this product is good to be saved. So if we look at our product, we have five fields. ID. ID is going to be auto-generated, so we're going to ignore that one. We're not going to validate anything for that one. It's going to have a name, a description, a price, and a quantity. So let's add some logic to validate each one of these fields. And, this, and we're doing this in a custom way. So coming back here, I'm just going to make some comments. So we have name, description, price, and quantity. So we're going to want to write validation for each one of these fields. So with our name, we want to make sure that it's not null, it has no white space, or it's just plain white space, and it's not empty. So we're going to do if, and we're going to be using a library, string utils, string utils, and make sure your import is correct. We're importing this first one, io.micrometer.common.util dot is blank. This checks all three of those cases. Product dot get name. So if it's blank, then this is not good data. So we're going to throw an exception. We'll come back to this. Uh, eventually we're going to throw custom exceptions, but for now we just need to realize that we shouldn't be saving it to the repository. So our next one is description. We're going to do basically the same thing. If string utils is blank, product dot get description. We're also going to throw exception here. And for the next one, price. Price is a little bit different because price in our product is defined as a double. So a good validation that I can think of for price is let's make sure it's not zero and also let's make sure it's not negative. So we could do if product dot get price is less than or equal to 0, 0.0 then we will throw the exception. And for quantity, we'll do if product dot get quantity. We'll do the same validation here. Perhaps zero makes sense, but we'll also check to see if it's zero or negative. Then again, we shall throw the exception. And I'm going to delete my earlier comments. So let's go back and add our exceptions. So throw new. We'll do runtime exception. And we'll say product name cannot be empty. We could say empty, we could say blank, we'll say empty. Throw new runtime exception. Description cannot be empty. Throw new runtime exception. Price cannot be negative. Throw new runtime exception. Quantity cannot be negative. So again, these exceptions are not the best way to do this because it's not going to return back to the UI. It's just going to throw in the console. But I'll have a separate video on how to write custom exceptions so that we send back the correct error message to the UI. But this is really good for ensuring the safety of our endpoint, meaning if a product gets passed in that is wrong, doesn't have a name or a description or the price or quantity is wrong, 
then it won't save it to the repository. When, when Java throws, it ends the method call. It doesn't continue. So we can be assured that once we get to this step, we are happy and we can successfully save it to the repository and that the data will be good. So let's go ahead and boot this up and then test it in Postman. So we got this error, consider defining a type bean. What we forgot to do is add service to our annotation. Java was not able to scan for it. So if we add service, it should work. We click run. So coming over to Postman, we are on our post request and I have a valid product. So I have a name, description, price, and quantity, and they are all valid. And my expectation is that this still saves to the database. So let's test it out. So we got back a 200 response, which is expected. Let's check in SQL to see if it saved. So use no BS, select star from product. And there it is with ID of five, a Yeti Bluetooth microphone. So let's modify this in a bunch of ways to see if the correct errors are being thrown. So first let's try to name it with an empty string. So we get an internal service error going over here. We get a product name cannot be empty. Great. Let's try null. Product name cannot be empty. Great. Now let's try deleting this entirely. So even if we don't have a field at all, it still registers as null because that's how JSON works, which is exactly what we want. Let's add it back in. And let's try making our price negative. A good, we still get an error. Price cannot be negative. Great. Let's try one more. Let's try the quantity. We'll do negative one. Good, still getting an error. And quantity cannot be negative. Great. So what this is telling us is that these errors are correctly being thrown and it prevents it from saving to the repository. But let's double check that. Let's make sure these never actually got saved. So we still only have the four items and none of the bad items got saved. So this is how you protect your API. Even if you're expecting the correct thing to always be sent, you never know. There could be a change on the UI, there could be a bug in the UI, there could be some unexpected behavior, and you want your APIs to be able to self-protect and you don't want to be passing in garbage data into your database. Now, like I said before, when we do the exception, the custom exceptions, what we're going to do is we're going to return a response entity back to the front end that tells it, hey, this is the exact error as opposed to a generic 500 error, which doesn't tell the user very much. So this essentially is a command handler. Another, another thing we can do here is we can abstract all of this out into a single method. So for example, let's say we had a lot more computations we needed to run on product. Perhaps we have other fields that we need to check. Uh, this is validation, and this is kind of the same thing. We just want to make sure that everything past this point is a valid product. So I'm going to abstract this out. So I'm going to say, let's write a private method, private validate product. And it needs to be, and it's going to return void. So I'm going to take all this logic and shove it in there.
and it's going to take in a product product okay so then we are going to validate product we're going to pass in the product and now since it's abstracted out if i'm now focusing on a different computation i can just say oh this method validates the product it ensures that the data being passed in is good now i can look at the other computations perhaps i'm updating a date or doing something else specific so this is a good way to write your code um, every method should be at the same level of abstraction so we have validate product we have save the product and then we have return response entity so this is all at the same level of abstraction Whereas down here, these are more of a lower level of abstraction. This is specifically what it's doing uh, to validate the product. Okay, thank you for joining us. On the next episode, we will continue down and we will do update product and turn that into a command handler. See you then.